Hiring a contractor, do you really know what you're getting into? Hi, this is Clint with the Stitz Real Estate Group. And before we begin, I'd like to call your attention to two links on our blog. First, if you're interested in buying or investing real property, please click on the Search Now link. If you're interested in selling real property, please click on the Property Valuation link. So let's get right to it. You're getting ready to remodel your house. Maybe you're getting a new kitchen, a new kitchen and a new bathroom, or you're doing a full backyard project. Whatever it is, hiring a contractor is a lot more complex than many believe it to be, and there's some key things that I'd like to share with you to take into consideration when going down that road. Okay? The first thing that we want to look at is ensuring that you have a form contract. Okay, so we'll put a link to, uh, I think, the American Institute of Architects and some form contracts they have available for a very nominal cost to you. So look below for a link to the, that specific resource. Because the last thing you want to do is have a contractor who says, yeah, here's the deal. Uh, we're going to give you a new kitchen with some granite and some tile floors. Assign here, please. Okay, <laughs> that does not protect you or him in any way, shape, or form. This is a complicated process. They are basically manufacturing in your home, okay? So let's be a little bit more diligent about it than that. Uh, the first thing we wanna make sure is in there is a payment schedule, okay? The last thing you wanna do is have a contractor start, collect too much upfront, not pay any people, and disappear. Simultaneously, he does need adequate monies to be able to buy the materials, pay his subs, pay his people to get the work done in a timely fashion. So you really need to have a detailed payment schedule and when those payments are to be released, whether they're from you or your bank, if you're getting a loan to do a rehabilitation project on your home, um, payment schedule is huge. Okay. The next thing we want to talk about is a warranty. What warranty is the contractor offering? Is it, is it a one year warranty where he's going to come back and fix anything that's wrong with it? Uh, is it solely his limitations and liabilities are under state law? Just have that clearly spelled out such that you're comfortable and the contractor is comfortable. It doesn't need to be complicated, but it is, does need to be talked about. The next thing is timeline penalties. Okay, especially in our market where we have such a shortage of skilled tradespeople, the last thing you want to do is not have a timeline in your contract, especially if you're living somewhere other than your house. So it's very common to say that every day that this project goes beyond an X number of days, it's going to cost that contractor a certain amount of money. That way he can keep his people on time and his subcontractors on time because he can pass those penalties down the line. So while it doesn't feel good to enforce or if something goes wrong uh, that's understandable, perhaps you can negotiate uh, some leeway in that contract or when it comes you can negotiate some leeway, but definitely have timeline penalties. Again, if you're going to be incurring the cost of living somewhere else while the contractors in the house have those expectations in writing. The next thing is insurance. Does your contractor have course of construction insurance in case something happens? Or how about general liability insurance in case a worker gets hurt on the job site? It's definitely worthwhile to ask those questions and also talk to your insurance agent to understand what your potential liabilities are, what your coverages are, versus what your contractor's liabilities are and what his coverages are. Again, something to talk to professionals about to understand. The last thing I wanna do is for you to get stuck in a surprise that is hugely, hugely expensive. Uh, the next item is termination. Okay? None of us want to imagine entering into a professional relationship with somebody and having to terminate that relationship. But life happens. And you know, termination, it has to be within reason. It can't be just arbitrarily, I decided I don't like you, get out. <laughs> but there is a scenario where if a contractor fails to perform, you can give a notice to perform. Usually it's like a 48-hour, a two week notice to perform and if they don't perform the requirements within said timeline, they can be removed from the job site and the contract uh, null and void. But then you need to talk about uh, if monies have been paid and work hasn't been performed, what monies get returned. You gotta clearly spell out termination, the implications and where the money flows if that unfortunate scenario were to occur, okay? The last thing is that you absolutely need to make sure that there are going to be lien releases prior to or upon final payment and also secondary lien releases. So let me tell you what that means. Let's say you have a general contractor who's also hiring uh, a flooring contractor to install tile flooring. And that, that flooring contractor also purchases all of his materials 
from a materials house. Well, there's a potential situation where the general contractor could record a lien, the subcontractor could record a lien, and the materials supplier could record a lien. That's three liens that need to be waived because the last thing you want to do is uh, go to get a new loan on your home or go to sell it and realize that you have a $2,000 liability to a tile supply warehouse that you've never spoken to simply because your general contractor forgot to pay the sub or even that sub conveniently forgot to pay his tile supplier. Mistakes do happen. I'm not saying there's ill will in the industry, but these protections are in place for a reason because the last thing we want to do is have you stuck with an unexpected liability down the road. So those are the seven things that I want you to take into consideration when entering a contract with any builder, contractor, remodel contractor, backyard landscape contractor, whatever type it is, you need to take these into consideration. Of course, there are some other complexities that if you want to call us and have questions about or we can connect you with other experts that have additional resources for this, please give us a call. This is Clint with the Stitzer Real Estate Group wishing you great success in all your real estate ventures. Thanks for watching.